I'm supposed to be here tonight. I want to just thank you for inviting me and apologize that Lee can't be here. He's in Columbus and his schedule's a little crazy. Uh, he leaves Monday morning and usually comes back to Cleveland Friday night um, or Saturday. So he's gone quite a bit and he's traveling around the state and working really hard. I don't want to assume that everybody knows Lee, uh, even though both of us have been you know, raised here and, and I on the west side of Cleveland and Lee on the east side of Cleveland. Um, and we kind of met, I think, on the Detroit Superior Bridge. You know, <laughs> so we bridged that gap and we brought, we brought, merged both sides of the city together, although I did say and well, I'm one of nine children, and I met Lee in 1975 when, you know, we started dating. And uh, one of nine, I said to him, you know, I think what you did was you lined all the zone girls up. And you went, <laughs> okay, <laughs> she's the one. I think I could, because he, you know, he knew he was going to be in government. He had a passion for it. Our family has been in government, and I grew up, um, and and so you know he had this little army on the west side, which which was great. You know I, I grew up. My dad was a Cleveland City Councilman. From he went into council in 1960, and he served in council until 1974. And when he passed away suddenly, uh, George Forbes at the time approached him, and, or approached my mother and said, Mary, we'd like you to finish Mike's council term. So that was 1974. And then my mom continued and continued running and, and she served in that seat until 1981. And as I said, my brother Matt is now serving in the Detroit Shoreway community and doing incredible things over there. If anybody has an opportunity to go over, it's a, truly the art district. It's, it's exciting what's happening over there, and so I'm real proud of him and, and, and the work that he's, that he's doing. Um, we, um, you know, Lee started out, we, as I said, we, we met in 75, we got married in 1980. When we got married, uh, I had no idea he was gonna run for office at the time, and if anybody's familiar with, like, state politics, Harry Lehman was the state representative from the east side. I don't know if anybody knows that name, but he was a state rep for many years. And so this is 19, almost 1980, 1979, around November, Harry announces that he's retiring. So we're engaged. Our wedding is planned in March of 1980, and Lee turns to me and says, I have to run for this seat. I want to be in the legislature. I love the legislative process. And so, January of 1980, we bought our home and we moved into it. February of 1980, we had our first major fundraiser. March 2nd of 1980, we got married. So it was like I was writing thank you notes for the contribution and thanks for the crock pot. <laughs> so it was, you know, everything became a blur. But this is how I started my life with this man. He is so passionate about the work that he does. And I knew that from the very beginning, I knew because it was obvious how I was starting my life with him, that this was gonna be my life now from here on. And it has been really wonderful. Um, you know, when people say when you're in politics, uh, it's all fun and games and it's very <coughs> glamorous. There are a lot of sacrifices that families make, all families, and it's not just you know it's not just my family, but it's all families that do. There's a lot of separation. Their children are separated from their parent, from one or the other, and and so if you run, it, it really you really do need to have the family support there because it could really tear you apart if not, and it can. Ruin. I've seen many relationships ruined along the way. Um, I feel ours has gotten stronger as, as time goes by. So 1980, Lee served, served as a state representative, and, and then in 1982, he ran for the state senate. 1982 
was when there was redistricting and there was um, a new districts that were drawn, you know, when we go through the census uh, every 10 years. So that was very important. All of a sudden there was a new district drawn in 1982 where it was favorable. It all of a sudden became a little favorable for a Democrat. And it was still a very competitive race, but they blended, they blended this district and so Lee ran for state senate and, um, and he won and then he served in the senate until um, 1990 when he ran for attorney general. And the work that he did, and I can tell you about the work he did in the Senate, um, if anybody's interested, I'm proud of what he did. He was in the minority, and in the Senate he, he had passed more legislation than most Republicans sitting in the Senate, and he was in the minority. He, he wrote the uh, missing children's law, and I don't know if you remember uh, a television movie that was on in 1984. It was the story of Adam, and this was the story of Adam Walsh. Lee and I were watching this story on television, this movie, and I was pregnant at the time with Jason, who's now 25 years old. And we were watching, and it was Daniel J. Travante who played John Walsh. We were watching this movie, and the two of us got so upset and so involved at what happened, and Lee became so passionate about this because in the state of Ohio, it was easier to find a missing car than it was to find a missing child. There was no legislation. So he knew, he, he, when he went back to Columbus the next day, he started talking and pulling a team together, and, and he was getting a lot of pushback on it. So he decided he was gonna go and meet John Walsh. We didn't know John Walsh, but he was gonna go meet him. So he flew to Washington and he sat outside John Walsh's office and he waited for him. He waited for him to come out. He waited there for hours. I mean, they knew they, oh, <laughs> Senator Fisher's out here, you know, and, and Mr. Walsh is very busy right now. And Lisa, said, that's fine, I'm just gonna wait. So he waited, he waited. Well, by the time, you know, obviously he met John and we've become very good friends over the years. John traveled with Lee, helped create this missing child legislation that we have in the state of Ohio, and really traveled around the country. It was a model bill, and, and it was the first of its kind, and, and it was duplicated all over the country. Um, there are, Lee was the one who put every one of our kids in, seat, in car seats. There was never a car seat law. And he always laughed and said, you know, when these little babies grow up and they turn 18, they're all gonna vote against me for strapping them <laughs> in. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's again, you know, he, he's, he has, his whole career has been about helping and preserving and working and fighting for families and children and doing what is right and for the underprivileged. Um, after he was attorney, well, then when he ran for attorney general, he started a program in Ohio, and it was, I don't know if anybody remembers Operation Sting, and it was an old law that was on the books. I'm not sure if I have the, the exact title of it, but it was an old law that was on the books, and he revived it, and what the law basically said was that you were able the, the Attorney General and, and with law enforcement would be able to go in and shut down crack houses. But instead of, j and, and just clear them out, arrest the people inside, clear them out, and walk away. But what Lee did with this law, they not only, they, they shut down over 1,200 crack houses, a good majority of them in Cuyahoga County, but instead of walking away from these crack houses, he then stayed and they turned, they, they turned these crack houses and they fixed them up and they put good families in them who couldn't afford a home. So it was sort of like a little Habitat for Humanity program where they were trying to create a community and, and get rid of some of the problems. And, and that was a program that, again, I was really proud of him. 